We're still celebrating Nigeria at 61, and I know that a lot of us have mixed feelings about the independence. Um, but one thing is for sure, we are a nation filled with hope. And of course, if there's any sector that is doing us proud, it is the creative sector. And with me in the studio is an entrepreneur and an actor extraordinaire. I would usually say I'm a fan, but I think I'm beyond the fan at this point. Ladies and gentlemen, a day I mean, Okolawo in the studio how are you doing i'm doing very you're looking well. good you're very looking well. good thank you trying to be like you. very fashionable so i'm a huge fan of your works and i'm not referring to your great act acting skills uh, i'm actually <laughs> referring to your photoshopping skills because i i really don't understand why <laughs> you use why do you like trolling other celebrities by photoshopping their pictures that was the first question i said i was going to ask you today <laughs> so true story true yes. story i was minding my business in my house during the whole pandemic period and then some of my friends started looking for my trouble online you know they would just do things more i said Mofe, Mofe duncan kule remy and co yeah and i decided to show them you know for the first time that i also know how to do these things and since then i've just been having fun <laughs> <laughs> amazing so you've had quite a journey um from theater, you moved on to movies. Um, you are a chemical engineer, if I'm correct. Yes. You studied chemical yes, engineering. I did. Yes, I did. So, how does one go from being a chemical engineer to an actor? <laughs> um, so, while I was, you know, studying engineering on campus, I had a, my first business. I started my first business. I was selling bread and cake on campus. Because right. at the same time, I joined a, a drama group on campus, a faith-based drama group on campus. And I graduated from school. I started, the business led me into a sales and marketing career for about eight years. And I also continued to act in church drama for many years, for as long as that. Um, eventually, sometime in 2010, you know, somebody mentioned an audition. I went to the audition. I got two roles from one audition, you know, for two different films. Um, wow. And then that turned into another film and another project and another project. By 2013, I was the head of marketing for a company called OLX. Wow. And I got the opportunity to be on a project called, a production called Giddy Up. Yeah, yes. the series, very popular. Exactly. And um, I quit my job to take a year off to act. Mm. You know, when I was done, I figured I would go back to work. And that was eight years ago. Oh, wow. Amazing. And what an incredible journey you've had so far. Um, I'm going to get back to you. Uh, we, we need to talk about, you know, how much the creative industry is doing for us as a nation. And right. what a huge PR. You know, we have the Whiz Kids, the Bonner Boy, yes. you know, the actors yes. all doing us proud. Um, but before we get to that, I would also like to introduce an actor and, of course, a musician extraordinaire. Ladies and gentlemen, Niola. How are you, Niola? Oh, we just lost Niola, so I'm going to get back to you, Deemi. So, how did we go from uh, being an industry that was relatively, you know, sort of just in the confines of Nigeria and maybe Africa, right. yeah? Now, Nollywood is global. We have a lot of Netflix deals going on. Right. How would you describe Nollywood's journey so far? Okay, so I, I wouldn't pretend to have enough experience to speak on such things. I mean, there are people who've been here for so many more years, but from what I've observed, um, one of the things that I would like to correct is this idea that Nollywood just became a global phenomenon. Unfortunately, we do not um, live in a country that values data and that captures enough data because what we will have seen is that Nollywood for a very long time has been a global phenomenon. Our movies have actually been consumed by black you know uh, people all over the world yeah um and and so that has been a very thriving underground so to speak economy um but we never really captured it we were never able to i think up until when good luck jonathan's administration there were some calculations being done with our gdp i think yeah and then and then we recognize the input of not just the entertainment industry as a whole but nollywood as well yeah and then of course people now started to pay attention and once people start paying attention to something, investors decide, you know, this is a viable place to be. As you see all these things happening, of course, doors are opened up to, to more and more to be happening. You know, we have Netflix looking at Nigeria critically, understanding that, okay, this is, this is the contribution that Nollywood has to the world of entertainment, and they're coming in. Amazon as well is opening up shop in Nigeria. We're looking at people like, uh, companies like Disney Plus and HBO. You know, everybody is trying to come to the country because someone took the time to measure and give us the statistics of what our industry 
was uh, was was adding to to the economy. Hmm. That's amazing. That's amazing. I, I want us to address something, and I think it's it's quite a conversation um, in the Nollywood industry. It seems like uh, there there are certain stereotypes. So some people would be referred to as the cinema faces. You have people that are referred to as the Asaba faces, quote and unquote, and then there's another segment that they say, oh, these people, they're strictly Iroko and everything. So uh, what do you have to say about uh, the click system? And correct me if I'm wrong, does the click system exist? Have you heard this before? So I've heard insinuations about click systems, and I understand in some certain areas where that might be coming in. But even at that, and I'll explain it in two different ways. The first is that you're absolutely wrong um, about that, that concept of, you know, um, there being, you know, certain faces for certain categories. Yeah. It's like a brand, you know, or, or, or an organization, for example, I don't want to mention any, but that has different products. And that, those products are targeted at different market Markets. segments, yeah. you know. And so, you know, based on who you're selling to, if you're going to select a brand ambassador for the East, you know, you're not going to take somebody from the South or from the North to represent that brand in that space. You're not going to do that. Mm. You know, so um, when producers hire actors, especially, you know, they're looking partly at the talent of the actor and also the brand. That's the eyeballs that that um, brand, that, that um, actor, sorry, um, attracts to the movie. So if there are people who have grown a fan base that tend to go to cinemas, yes, then you're more likely to hire an actor that has that kind of background, that has that kind of following. If what you're doing is you're producing content for a specific market, you know, whether, when, when, whichever area of the country, whether, yeah. or even for YouTube or some of these other platforms that we have, you're going to look at hiring some other kind of actors. And that's really what's going on. But to talk about there being a, a, a click system, the truth is you're going to work with people that you trust over and over again. Mm. I've worked with the same directors multiple times because they trust me to deliver and I trust them you know, to take care of me when I'm on set. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. as an actor, I'm in front of the camera, I don't know what's going on mm. and I need to totally trust you know, my director you know, and everybody else on set. Um, and I would love to work with those people over and over again. And that's where you see friendship and professionalism. I think I'm about to do my 13th Ebony Life project and that's come from, you know, just being professional and also finding value, you know, from the company. Again, you know, it's been a fantastic relationship. And there's several companies like that that I've worked with. All right. Amazing. Uh, speaking about, you said something about when you've worked over time with producers, you know, they just trust you and they want to work with you. And I think I, I agree with you because I've seen you on several projects and your latest being Swallow yes. on Netflix. <laughs> we'll be connecting with your co-star now, uh, Niola. Hello, Niola. Welcome to the program. Hi. <laughs> How are you Hi, today? Hi, everyone. Hi, Demi. Hi, Tolani. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I must say that uh, the chemistry in that movie, it's, it's amazing. Um, yeah, I'm talking about, you know, two of you. Yeah. The way, you sure. said, the way you said Tolani, <laughs> like she's your wife in real life. <laughs> So how's the experience <laughs> been? Um, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, did you recently have a crossover from the music scene to Nollywood or uh, are you experimenting with Nollywood, you know, because you are still a musician? What's up with Niola now? Um, I mean, I've always wanted to do some form of acting. I just wasn't sure when and how. And so when the, when the opportunity came, I, at first I was afraid and I was nervous and I wanted to chicken out, but then I thought, why not? It turns out, <laughs> it turns out that maybe I'm supposed to be doing this. Okay. And you, you, you actually had an incredible performance. Um, I saw the movie and it was really mind blowing. Yeah, you had an incredible Thank performance. You. And so what happens to the music now? I mean, I, I, like I always say to everyone, I, I could never not do music because music is, is a part of me. So I've always still done music on some level, even though I kind of um, <clears throat> pulled away a little bit from um, releasing like a project and that for about three years now, which, you know, that was a very good reason for that. I don't know if you know, I had lost both my parents in a very short period of time and I felt like I needed some time away. 
Mm. Um, and to that effect, I made a song last year in December, which was released called Illuminati. So I've been working on projects, like I worked on the music of Swallow um, with Kent and Nujabi. I worked on all the songs on, on um, Swallow with him, kind of a and R, the projects for Swallow. And I also did something on King of Boys and, um, and some other, some other um, movie soundtrack. So it's still, you know, it's still, it's still all intertwined. All right. And then someday soon, I can't tell you when, <laughs> I will put out music of my own again. Okay, so <laughs> right you, we're, now, we're going to hold that. Uh, there, me, I, I, there's an area I want us to go into now. Uh, so in every industry, you, know, you hear people say that, oh, I've made it this far because I've paid my dues. You know, um, this, and I'm trying as much as possible. Let's see how we can demystify what paying dues, quote and unquote, is. <laughs> I'm going, I'll make a quick reference. Uh, very recently, I think Toke Makinwa made mention of something. She said that um, young acts should learn to put in the work, you know, that even our great whiskey at some point had to carry speakers and buy Amala for DJs just so they play his song, all right? I'm just paraphrasing, yeah. all right? Those might not be her exact words, but that's <laughs> as reported. You know, so, and what she was trying to buttress was the fact that a lot of people just want the fame, but they're not willing to put in the work and also make certain sacrifices. So what is paying your dues? Can you demystify that? Because I hear it all the time. Yeah. I've paid my dues, we're yeah. paying our dues. What does it mean? So there is a... Hmm. It's, it's taken me eight years to become an overnight success. It's taken me eight years to become what people are referring to me as an overnight success. People don't see the toiling. They don't see the frustrations. They don't see the hard work. We're talking sheer hard work. Um, they don't see the moments where you're working for virtually nothing. The first film I ever did, I got paid 10,000 naira. The next film was 15,000 naira. They took me to Ilori to go and shoot for four days. Um, I had a business that I was, that I was running. I've also had you know, a, a career you know, during that same time. But um, I mean, all these years has really just been honing my skills um, and then proving myself. So it's two parts. It's honing my skills to make sure that I get better and better. And just you know, more than just being an actor, it's adding value to the producers, you know, beyond acting. Um, and I read up on everything, you know, f that concerns film so that I can be a better actor. Um, and over time, what I've seen is that, again, as I said earlier on, people trust you more. The more people trust you, the more they want to reward you. Um, the more work you have, the more people find you know, to you to be valuable. And so it's, it's, it's a lot of work to succeed in any, in any sphere of life. It's not just music, it's not just a film. In any sphere of life, it takes a while. And looking back, I was just thinking about this a few days ago, I look back and I realized all the times I was, you know, frustrated at the quote unquote lack of or slow progress yeah. was just a time that I needed to, to be patient. If I, had, if I could have seen what was gonna happen now, I promise you it would have been easier to just relax and not give myself too many headaches. Okay. It's, it's a good thing that you're not relaxing. <laughs> Niola, what are your thoughts? Um, I'm just going to piggyback off what uh, Deyemi has said. You really just keep honing your skills. Like for me, uh, when I took the break, the time I did, it was important to me to come back and be my true authentic self in the sense that I wasn't just making music because um, this was where I found myself. It was important to me to do what was authentic to me because the, the intention of your art is also important. Like Demi said, like when people trust you, when people, um, well, how did you say it again? It's that people will trust you more. And when people trust you, when people trust you more, they start to give you um, things to do. So, when you yourself are able to find out what you're supposed to be doing and you're comfortable and confident enough in it, like the rest is easy. So mm -hmm. I agree with that. So paying dues to me is necessary. It's, it's, um, it's basically uh, the, the, the time that you have to, to put in, the times where you have to 
sometimes you doubt yourself sometimes you're so hard on yourself sometimes you deny yourself you deprive yourself of certain things and even though people are yapping on the internet and saying all sorts of things you know what you're doing and what you're working on because you're just like the end of justified means the end of justified means so yeah, yeah. that's that's what i think so that, and that is okay there's a caveat to that so before before we get to the caveats yeah. I just want to ask a follow-up question right. to Niola. Okay. Um, so Niola, there, there, there is probably a young girl or a young boy out there watching us right now, and he or she is saying that, I've been to countless auditions, and I don't get these rules. I've gone to several auditions. Uh, personally, myself, I've also attended, attended a lot of acting auditions, like, you know, about five years ago. And, you know, and, and I, I didn't really get the acting gigs. Uh, thankfully enough, I got a lot of hosting gigs, yeah? So for that one person out there watching you right now, how would you, what would you tell them to, and what would you say to encourage them to keep the hope alive? Uh, keep working, don't stop. If it's what you think you should be doing, like I always say, if you don't believe in yourself enough to take a chance on yourself, why would anybody do that, do that for you? So. And I see a lot of people too, and, and, and this goes for music as well, music and movies. People would send you messages and say, oh, I want to I wanna act too, please help me. Like, you don't go to the actors or you don't go to uh, the musicians. You go to the directors, you look, put your eyes and your ears out for auditions. You go to the studio and make a demo, and then now you have something to share with a record label owner, or maybe even a musician. So these are the things like, Put in a little bit of work. Um, I like you, like you were saying, Toka said, a lot of times people are not even willing to put in the work. And going for all these auditions or writing all these songs, are you sure that you've sharpened your skills enough? So if you know that you have, just keep at it. I'm pretty okay. good. If it's what okay. you're supposed to do, then it will happen. Okay, so DM, we're going to get to the caveats now. So, first, the, the one thing I'd like to say is, don't let anybody tell you what the dues you're supposed to be paying are. That's none of their business. You decide what dues you're paying. Figure out what it is that you should be doing and do it. Because people try to take advantage of this idea of paying dues and you know, use the, 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 the young up-and-coming actors or musicians. They, they, take to, they really do try to take advantage, and I, and I really am you know, against that. Um, and the other part, just to answer, just to add to what uh, Niola has just said, um, I didn't do too well in school. My, for some reason or the other, I came out with bad grades. And I was forced to go the route of results. I could never really just submit my, my, my papers or whatever, you know, my application for a job. You know how they do 2-1, first yeah. class? Nah, I could never do that. So I went the route of results. I had to go on the streets and prove myself. I was in sales, so I, I would every year I could tell you, this is what I did for that company. I raised this amount of money. I sold this amount of products. And eventually, that opened doors for me. I mean, I've gotten job offers from big financial institutions based off of the results that I had. What that means is, for example, now, you know how they open up application, 10,000 people would put in an application for one job. But because I've proven results, and what they're looking for really is results, I will skip over 10,000 people and get a job offer before they do. They don't have the results to back it up. I came into Nollywood with the same idea. You know, you, there, there, there's, there's a difference between working hard and working smart. Hmm. And a lot of people go to auditions thinking that that's paying the dues, that's doing the hard work. Hmm. Yes, there's a place for that. But also understanding that at the end of the day, what you need to do is prove results. I did a lot of short films when I was coming in. And I would have those short films on my phone. I meet a producer, a director. Oh, hi, my name is Demi. I just finished this short film. Can I talk and of course, because it was something that was really amazing, it caught their attention. And they yeah. wanted to have a conversation with me and continue. I learned that networking with the right people and not networking to, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know understand. Yeah. Not networking because you're trying to get into people's good books. Actually proving value to them, you know, did more for me than going to all the auditions in the world. I just wanted to add that too. To what Niola. And by the way, Niola, you are an amazing actor. You should continue doing this. She was beautiful as Teniola in uh, Swallow. Swallow. I, I, fell, I literally fell in love with her. So if you say there was chemistry, yes, there was chemistry. Someone was in love with Teniola. <laughs> are you guys tell. hearing? 
uh, <laughs> I could tell. I, I just really Thank wish we you. had more time. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I wish we had more time. And by the way, my favorite character uh, of yours is oh. Mr. Fashionor <laughs> in King of Boys. I could be really, least favorite character. I know. I know I because can't stand you. <laughs> after I watched King of Boys and I saw you play that role, I don't know. Whenever I see you, I just see Mr. Fashionor. I know that's not a good thing, but you played it so effortlessly. And I'm like, I never knew Damien could be this stupid. Because, <laughs> you know... Yeah, wow. the character was a bit yeah. stupid, you know, quite, but quite. he also delivered on the job, you know. I've as... never been that kind of submissive. Like, I've, I've been so alpha my entire life. Yeah. Taking on that character was one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever done. But I, I loved the experience to step farther away from myself than I ever had before. And it was a great experience. So please th say thank you to Kemi Aditiba for the vision and the foresight. Kemi, if you're watching... A big thank you to you. Niola, please, in 60 seconds, uh, what is your final thoughts? Um, I want to, I mean, the, the, um, the movie Swallow has given me um, a huge opportunity to find out things about myself that I never knew that I had. Big ups to Colette for life. Big ups to, to Soul. I'm never going to call you DM again. I don't know how it's going to happen. <laughs> Big up to Sun Woke, because while we were on set, he was giving me tips. He would tell me, um, oh, this is why you have to do this here, and this is why you have to do that. So it's been a very interesting um, um, experience for me. And it's one of those things that will forever mark and shape my life. And I'm so thankful also to everybody who has said yeah. something positive, the review, the feedback. I'm so thankful. Um, please go and um, stream the music. The music is also there. All the songs that were um, on the in the movie, all right. they're on all streaming platforms. You can listen to every one of them. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Channel. Thank you, Niola. Thank you, Demi, for coming. We've had such a wonderful conversation. And to you watching, thank you so much for tuning in. This has been an amazing show. This is Robin Mines. My name is Hero Daniels. And until we catch you next week, same time, same station, stay safe. Bye for now. Yeah,